Welcome to the Beauty and Battle podcast, where we talk about winning in marriage by waging a war. I'm Jason Benham. I've got my girlfriend slash wife, Tori Benham, with me, and we are here to talk to you about how Satan tries to get you to fight face-to-face with your spouse, but God designed you to fight shoulder-to-shoulder against Satan so that you can win in your marriage. Fighting together draws you together. We cannot wait to jump in. So here we go. All right, I'm really pumped about today because Tori and I have some very special friends in from Vail, Colorado. Is that where you guys live? <laughs> no, no. We live kind of south of Breckenridge. Oh, gosh, so, I was wrong. It's still, you got the Colorado part, It's close. Right? It's close. Vail, Breckenridge, Aspen, Denver. Yeah. But, you know, when you're from Texas, which I am, then it's all just kind of the same. It is. It's if just it, not Texas. Yeah. You live at... <laughs> You live in everywhere else. <laughs> you live in one of the forty nine lesser states. <laughs> we have Eric and Rachel Beck with us. Uh, for many of you that, that know anything about David and I, we are business partners with Eric uh, on our entrepreneurial training company called Expert Ownership. Eric is our master coach, and he's our wizard, and he's the guy that basically gives us all our good content on our Expert Ownership podcast. We talk about a lot of good stuff over there. But what I didn't realize though was that his wife is really the brains. That Rachel is smart sure. as you are. Er. She's the how <laughs> many smart courses her. how many courses have you created? So far eight. You've created eight yeah, courses. But I feel like there's another ten in there easily. Oh, oh my just, goodness. I, I agree. 100%. So I'm gonna butcher it. Uh your website is what, Rachel? Rachelbeckwellness.com. Rachel Beck Wellness. Okay, tell us real quick what you do before we dive into some marriage stuff. I love it. I like to work with women to help them age well from the inside out. So it's root cause wellness, and it's starting with spiritual wholeness, maturity, cultivation of character. And yes, I love to talk about skincare and dry brushing and the importance of exercise and sleep, but all that will only get you so far. Mm. And really the foundation is the root cause wellness. Mm. And I love giving women a vision Mm. for feeling their best at any age and at any stage with practical grace-filled, strategic resources. Mm. Check it out. I love mm. it. Yeah. Rachel is such a wealth of knowledge. I have learned so much. And it's only been a little less than a year yeah. that I've known you, but she has helped me so much. And if you were sitting across from her, you would want to know her skin care tips for sure. Because <laughs> you're how old? 47. 47. Almost 48. And she looks like she's 30. <laughs> so you have to jump on her website and check check out her stuff because it has been super helpful. So I'm really And, really and I'm really glad that we're all friends because now I pick Eric's brain all the time. Like your husband is my business coach and we work together, but yet I'm always like, okay, so Eric, what what about this or what about this? And every time he lectures and, and does anything when in terms of our coaching. Um, I'm always one of the guys in there like, I've got my phone out, so I'm hoping that mm-hmm. you don't think I'm texting or anything, but I'm like <laughs> jotting down all these notes. But now it's like, now Rachel and Tori know each other. And so Tori's coming back going, you're not going to believe what Rachel just taught me. It's so incredible. I'm like, that's what I feel like when I'm with Eric. Yes. So here's what I love is that you guys don't have, you're, you're not like platform builders. You're not out there like on social media trying to build your platform. And, and here's what I love about well, I'm just going to say I love it about me and Tori. Absolutely. Is that Come we on. do Come not on. care if you have a platform, and that's yeah. not the only way you're going to get on our podcast. Right. You guys have stuff. Mm-hmm. You guys have, God has put some things in your hearts and in your minds, and he's given you life experiences that can help other couples, period. You helping businesses and entrepreneurs, Eric, Rachel, you helping women with some of the stuff that you've talked with Tori about. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, Tori, they're in town. We're doing this business event. Both of you guys spoke yesterday and it's funny. I got a feedback. Um, we got a feedback form from one of our uh, attendees at our business thing. And it was so funny. He said, all your stuff was great. And Eric is always extraordinary as well. But man, you guys need to give more time to Rachel. Yes. <laughs> For sure. It was Eric <laughs> Lindquist. Sure. Yeah. Rachel wow. needs more time. For sure. Yeah, it was so good. So we got to do more time for you, Rachel. Oh, thank you. I would be honored. So that being said, um, knowing that you guys uh, have an extraordinary relationship, married how long? 
23, almost 24. 24. Wow. 24 years. You're both entrepreneurs. You're both business owners. Um, and you guys have six boys. Mm. What are the, what's the age range? And actually we have been married 24 and a half, almost 25 because our oldest is 23. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And then 21. See, eventually the math gets a little <laughs> yeah, tough. Right. Yeah. Like, what year was that? Yeah. 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 yeah so, yeah, yeah. So, yep. Yep. And uh, so yeah, 23, 21, uh, 16, 15, mm-hmm. 11, 7. And mm-hmm. you homeschooled all of them, right, yes, Rachel? Yes, we have. You homeschooled wow. them all, and you did your eight courses. And you, you know, Eric's got his his monster business going with us, and um, and yet you guys are in love. Mm. Yes, this is cool. It is yeah. cool. Yeah, I'm excited to hear. It. Yeah, some of what we're going to talk about, but <laughs> yeah. but I want to kick off with this, and and then I want to turn it over. Um, well, I just want you guys to start talking, and along with Tori. Um, you said something yesterday, Eric, that I thought of, and I just loved it, but you said something that I thought, man, this is so good. If people just get this, it'll help them in their marriages so much. But you said it in a business context, but obviously principles, they work. That's right. No matter where you apply them. That's right. That's the kingdom. If you don't transform your pain, you'll transmit it. Yes. Wow. That, that quote, if you don't transform your pain, you'll transmit it. I, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about emotions. Mm. What, what do we want to dive into Tor? Specific well, to emotion. Before we dive in, we have to do a joke. Oh. Because we have to start it out the way we always started out. I totally <laughs> forgot that. <laughs> but this week, this is the cutest thing ever. I hold before me a note from their 11 year old Liam, who we got to meet a few weeks ago. Oh, I love the him. sweetest kid. And he snuck this in your bag. Is that right, Rachel? <laughs> yes. <laughs> before we made it into oh, the Oh my to goodness. Their plane, I yeah. love it so much. So he gave us his best jokes. Yes. He's awesome. So I'm going to read some from Liam who listens to this yes, every day. Does. Liam, you're famous. <laughs> so great. I'll never date an apostrophe again. The last one was too possessive. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's a smart kid joke. I love it. Okay. I'm going to do one more. Cause I'm sitting there going, what's possessive have to do with apostrophe? <laughs> okay. Wait a second. I think I did learn that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a steak pun, well done, is a rare medium. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Liam. Thank this. you so much. That was I so know. sweet. And can you tell us real quick what sweet Liam did right before you left your trip? I thought that was the sweetest oh, story he ever. Blew what? My mind. He's going to be a great husband one yeah. day because he treats his mama right. Yes. That's right. right. Well, yeah. Eric has set an amazing example as a true gentleman, mm-hmm. and Liam has followed his lead. Liam saw that I had my little roll on carry on and my travel bag and my jacket. And without being asked, he just took those to the car and he loaded them in and he like carefully positioned everything in certain locations. And then he said, mom, I made you a surprise. And he had made me this extraordinary cup of chai tea seasoned in a very particular way, a little travel cup and the last Mm -hmm. blueberry muffin for the the road. I know that's how I feel every day. I'm just like, you (laughs) you inspire me. I am so blessed to be your mom. That is the sweetest thing. Well, you I, must be responding well yeah. if he wants to do that. For that you. is oh, true. Now, that's a good yes. point, Tor. You know, I, and I've tried to teach my boys, you know, however you treat your mom is how you're going to treat your wife, you know? Mm-hmm. And no matter what we do to train them, they're, they have their own personality. Well, so Jesus. obviously, Liam is different than, sure. you know, so Judah right. or sure. whatever. Yeah. I mean, all your boys right. are great boys, but I just, I, I love that. But now yeah. I, I want to jump back into what I said there at the, at the beginning, where if you don't transform your pain, you'll transmit it. Uh, Rachel, I know you've talked a lot with Tori about emotions and Tori and I, we're definitely on this emotion kick mm-hmm. with traditional Chinese medicine, showing how un, uh, unprocessed emotions get trapped and they go down in your organs and it wreaks havoc on your body. You'll look older than what you should look. I mean, you'll feel older. And yeah. it's just not good. So I, w- I want to talk emotions. I want to get into that. Mm. But start with that thought. Maybe, maybe Eric, you kick off uh, okay. with, with – because you said the quote. And okay. then let's hand off to your wife. And then let's just have a really good conversation around emotions and how we can become emotionally intelligent uh, in, in our marriages. Well, I think it starts with uh, self-awareness. Yes. <clears throat> I do. I mean, that's uh, 
it's a struggle. Now you may have seen some of the funny movies. I can't remember which one it is. It's one of the, it's not Mr. Bean, but it's one of the spy movies he's in, the hilarious. Oh, yeah. And and he's talking about emotional leakage. Mm. And it's mm. so hilarious and uncomfortable. And I don't <laughs> vouch for the whole movie, but there's some funny scenes. But <laughs> um, but it's this idea of what I don't know that I'm doing. So let's say that like a week ago, um somebody got really, you know, upset with me. And, and I'm, and, and we kind of resolved it, but it's a, it's, it's a while later now. And, um, someone's like, Hey, can you hand me that thing? And I'm like, no, you should get it yourself. And I don't even realize that that's come out of me. And the person's like, what? I was just asking for the thing, right? It's confusing to both parties. Right. I think that's a good example of being emotionally unaware because mm -hmm. what we may think is that because I don't feel the emotion of the trauma or the conflict that I had, that it's gone mm -hmm. and it's not gone. It's not gone. In fact, and you may have even forgot you had that. Exactly. And then let's go back to childhood traumas, mm -hmm. um, which could be small. Sometimes we think of childhood trauma as like, wow, you got beat when you were a kid right. or you, you know, there's this horrific event. Obviously that is trauma. Right. But no child has no trauma mm -hmm. because they're being raised by human beings yep. and human beings forget, or they make a slight little comment like, I don't think you could do that. And they hear that in their head for 20 years. I know. Like, so Part of it makes you so nervous to be a parent. I know. Because right, right. you're like, what? oh, no, I messed something I up. I even feel bad right now as you said that. Mm -hmm. Well, I said certain I, things. Same, same. But the, the, the good news for it, though, is that um, we don't have to have this worldview of um, never make a mistake as a parent. What we do want to have as a worldview is we can teach you to transform pain. Mm. Hopefully, we're not causing much of it, but the world will surely show up and bring the, the, the difficulties. And so if we can, we can transform our pain, we won't transmit it means that in that sim, uh, example I was given a second ago of, of if I've, I've got the moment where there's a problem and I'm like, okay, what is my response to that? And we all mm. know that we can either be, um, we can run away from problems, yes. right? These are the, um, attachment styles. Yes. Right? Mm. Um, we can run away, we can cling, mm -hmm. we can want to fix it. We can want to fight, we can want to just do what everyone else is doing, you know, fight, flight, flock, fix. I've heard it. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. all of them, right? right? Mm -hmm. But there's a style that we learned in childhood to cope with how we're going to solve this problem. Because as children, when there's a problem, it's an existential problem. It's a survival problem. Right. If I'm left out of the group, mm. right, I won't live. And while a five-year-old's not maybe literally thinking that, the emotional body is thinking that, right? So then we come up with a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. That helps us, quote, survive. Right. And then when we don't process that as adults, all those same coping mechanisms are running our emotional lives for us. And then we're unconscious. So that wow. Wow. self awareness right. of our emotional state, right, is just, it's just huge. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah. so good. Um, so if we can talk a little bit about how do you take emotional responsibility? And what has that looked like for you in your marriage? And when did it, it kind of come to you that this was something that, that was a responsibility of yours to take? Well, certainly gradually, it wasn't anything that someone presented to yeah. us in a box and said, yes. this is your solution. Right. Yeah. But I think there's certainly the trial and error and you realize you're stuck in a dynamic yep. that is not working. Yep. And, you know, we've only had this happen once, but, you know, we make great use of it. Yeah. <laughs> Once every Why couple not? of hours yeah. for the first 15 years. Right. right. Great. So yeah. the great thing is that if we keep a growth mindset, mm -hmm. we will get there. Right. Oh, and I, wow. That's I, good. I, okay. So pause there. Growth mindset. Okay. Unpack that just for a second. Uh, if we keep a growth mindset, what does that mean? We're always realizing that we're not looking, you know, I think it's at first Corinthians three. That's like, don't look to the right or the left. Stop comparing yourselves among yourselves. It's foolishness. Wow. So, we don't want to compare ourselves and say, I'm better than so-and-so's wife. Like yeah. he should be so grateful. I handled that beautifully. Yes. Right? right. That's good. Well, how did you handle it relative to Christ? Mm. Right. Oh. Can we close that gap Jeez. at all? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. I think there's some room for progress there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the idea of, you know, even if you handle it right on the outside, yeah. like what were your thoughts? Are you, are you keeping an account of wrongs? Mm. Oh yes. I had a gentle answer, but that's going on a tally. Right. Yeah. So we don't want to do this. Right. Mm. So the growth mindset is, Yes, how you handle it, mm. how quickly you respond well, mm -hmm. how quickly you burn the account of wrongs, mm. how quickly you can retell the story in redemption. Wow. I think so much of this emotional wow. awareness is the ability to understand the narrative that you unconsciously 
are filtering yes. your partner's behavior through. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now we're getting real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I kind of want you just to keep going. Yeah. Right. That's the, really good. Let's talk about this for a second, how it, it can flip in the conversation. So if I'm doing something that's really annoying you, I think really good emotional awareness is that at some point when the dynamic is not progressing and she can tell I'm in a fixed mindset, like I am trapped in a loop, Mm -hmm. that she starts realizing, oh, I'm not just talking to Eric, who's 50. I'm talking to Eric, who's 20 and Um, Eric, who's eight. Right now, those humans are existing in him Mm. in some way where his pain hasn't yet been transformed. Mm. Because if you account that to... The 50 year old, you're like, you should not be behaving. How right. can you, like, we go into yeah. so much judgment, yeah. right? But we realize, oh, wait a minute, that little part of us, and maybe there's 100 parts or 13 mm. parts or 50 parts that we grow with, that one part might still be about 12 years old. Mm. Oh. And this situation just brought it up, and the enemy mm. will whisper in her ear and say, look at that. Mm. And not as the 12 year old. Right. You know, and when you see it, she was saying redemption, you know, you see it as like, that's little five-year-old Rachel. I'm hmm. not mad at little five-year-old Rachel. Do you hmm. suggest not saying that in the middle of the, the <laughs> argument? Hey, Correct. that's five-year-old Rachel. Correct. We call that, what do we call that? Don't therapize. <laughs> Don't therapize your partner. That is mm. so destructive. But mm. I mean, you know, you're, you're being funny and it is funny, but that's really important what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very important. So we never want to condescend mm. and be like, oh, you're acting yeah. like a five-year-old. Mm. But in our heart, what can be very helpful, and I'll tell you where at, for this, it starts with me, mm. is when I am processing pain apart from the situation later. Mm. And I'm like, wow, this is never going to work out. Or this thing's not, I'm so upset about this thing. Or how do I do this mm. thing to realize, hey, 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 that might be six-year-old Eric. How would you treat a six-year-old yes. who came to you with a six-year-old mm-hmm. problem? Yes. Like yeah. my toy broke. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, I get that, buddy. That yeah. is so, oh man, that is, I know we can fix this, but right now let me just give you a hug. Yeah. You know what? Just look in my eyes. It's going to yeah. be okay. Mm-hmm. When you start to give yourself that kind of care, you're re-embodying the love of Christ wow. for you at that age. You're reparenting mm-hmm. in that moment. That's good. And that's what I, if I work on that on my own, then when we have a conflict, I'm not going to say, well, you're acting like a five-year-old, but I'm thinking five-year-old Rachel, this is someone else's mm. daughter, like your guys' yeah. daughter, right. who's in a crisis moment. Mm-hmm. How would you approach your your neighbor's daughter who's yeah. just really falling apart over something as a 12-year-old? Right. You know what I mean? It totally reframes. And now it's redeemable because now I'm partnering with her for her healing. Yeah, right. She's partnering with me for my healing instead of mm. blame. Rachel, I oh, sorry, sorry. I was just going to say, it reminds me of the quote that we say all the time, how you see the battle term is how you fight the battle. This changes perspective completely. Exactly. So that's really cool. Awesome. Um, Rachel, you, you, I think I'd like to take this in two, two directions, and I think you can help us with both. Um, you said uh, uh, that oftentimes our, our behavior and the things that we do is born out of something that's unconscious in us. So the first is, how do we become more conscious of that? Like, how can we become more self-aware? And the second is what Eric was talking about, how sometimes it's not 50-year-old Eric that's talking to you, it's five-year-old Eric. How can you then as a spouse help them out of that? So can you take us those two different directions? Uh, those are great questions. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I always feel like everything we learn, we paid such a dear price for. Mm-hmm. I am committed to a return on investment. I want all the people yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, to like do. benefit. Yes. Right. So cultivating self-awareness. I really feel like it starts with listening prayer. Ooh, there you it go. It really does. Because until you're able to still yourself, right. you are unable to perceive anything. Mm. If you're walking around in the blizzard and everything's at speed yeah. running around you, mm-hmm the ability to perceive goes way down right? Mm. and managing our schedule and our inputs. Mm. You know, it's possible to spend the entire day where there's always sound in the background and you're either speaking or listening, but it's constant verbiage and stimulation, et cetera. We want to be sure that we're creating Mm. space to Mm. digest what's happening because otherwise something can happen at 11 Mm. and you don't really have time to realize that you're a little affected by it. Right. And then something happens at 1145 and it kind of stacks a little bit. And then you get to one and you overreact to something. Mm. And it's because we didn't actually have the time to like digest our food, like emotionally. Right. right. Like yeah. we're just piling a bunch of things on yes. and, and not really working through it. Mm. So I believe that 
one of the main things we can do to support our spiritual growth mm-hmm. and our physical health is in this category of essentialism mm-hmm. and like it's not possible to just keep raising the bar infinitely on everything. Yeah. You have to create the space for that work, which takes a lot of energy and attention. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you don't have the energy or attention, your rate of growth will greatly diminish. Mm-hmm. And you'll spend a lot of time cleaning up problems because you didn't take the time on the front end. You could have taken one unit of time mm-hmm. to strategize or give yourself a 10 minute break to be still mm-hmm. before you moved on with your day. But instead we took 10 minutes to somehow intake something. And so we just have this backlog. And so we're not current with ourselves Mm -hmm. emotionally. Emotionally, we're still at 8 a.m. or we're still at 11, but it's two. And so we're reacting like time lag. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So the self-awareness comes, I think, in being strategic, in simplifying and getting great courage to say no to everything that isn't in the bullseye of your calling. Mm. Right. And then you are more present to actually know what is happening in any given moment. Wow. And the time you spend in silence gives you the ability to understand your mind. Mm. Yeah. We all have a mind that's like a car and you know, some cars pull right or they pull left or they have these little quirks mm-hmm. and we all have our vehicle, right? But most people don't know their vehicle and they're shocked that Mm. it's constantly pulling them right. Like, why do I keep ending up in the ditch? Mm. Like, well, you need to understand you have a tendency towards that with this particular characteristic. And we all have our little unique mix of of bents that pull us in the ditch. Mm. Like, you're going to need to correct a little by moving the steering wheel this way if you want to go straight. Mm. But you won't know that if you're not taking the time to observe your vehicle and that time in stillness lets you notice, does your mind go forward to the future and you're worrying? Mm. Does it go backwards to the past and you're blaming or grieving? Or is it jumping all over the place and you learn the bent of your mind? Mm. And until you know what you're working with, you can't even make the correction. Wow. And then you understand, all right, I have a habit of, Mm -hmm. you know, anxiety, regret. There's probably 10 versions of this, but those are two good examples, right? Right. Yeah. And then you go, all right, so this is what I'm working with. Mm. And then, then you begin your, your mental rehabilitation process. (laughs) You're like, father, I need my mind renewed. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's not, if you have these, we all have several, and we usually have one or two dominants Mm -hmm. and the other ones might come and go seasonally with particular circumstances that trigger them. But when you understand your bent, mm. then you're like, look, that's almost like a, a distortion. Right. And I'm going to bring that forward, not just in my silence, but in my action. Wow. Wow. So how do I correct for that? And how do I, what scriptures do I memorize? Mm. What teachings do I absorb? And then, and I'll pause for a second, but the other aspect of self-awareness is feedback. Wow. Oh gosh. <laughs> I don't want feedback. Tomorrow. We just went way. Yeah. Now we're in it. Yeah. <laughs> like if wow. I notice that, I'm getting a particular reaction from Eric and all my boys. Mm. Is it more intellectually integrous or uh, spiritually integrous to think well, they're all messed up right? and I am doing just fine. This is yeah. working. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> or is working. it like, you know, actually everyone's telling me mm. that I have a tendency to drive in this ditch. Wow. Yeah. And even though I feel like I can make all kinds of great reasons that that's just their filter, mm-hmm. maybe you, I would be wise. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they may be telling you, they may yeah, be telling you so with good. their mouth, but they may also be telling you by their actions by shutting down. Mm. Absolutely. Because I would say probably the majority of listeners, wouldn't you agree, Tor, are probably women. Right. Um, and a lot with uh, kids, you know, in, in elementary school, right. you know, kind of age. What would you say to them, Rachel, if they're like, I don't have time for anything right now? Mm. Like, wh- what's the encouragement that you would give yeah. to them? Because obviously they they need to be able to become conscious of what's going on yeah. and experience peace and rest. You know, Tori has said this, I heard you say it yesterday, you said for 10 years, you didn't sleep hardly. Right, <laughs> yeah. Because mm-hmm. you're so busy. First well, of all, if, if you're in that chapter of your life, I love you and you're not in the trenches alone mm-hmm. and it will, this too shall pass. So I just want to send you like a big virtual hug. Mm-hmm. And it's a perfect opportunity to stimulate extraordinary growth mm. because stressed plants have higher nutrient value it's the stressed plants that become the superfoods. Wow. So you look Didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. You look at this, you know, if you have like four versions of frankincense, yep. four plants, 
the one with the least hospitable conditions will have the highest concentration of active ingredients. That's what I'm what? talking about. You, Bex, wow. find out this stuff. Like, yeah, how do you know that? You know, she just writes it on post-it notes and I read it. But that's she's incredible. The one. Okay. <laughs> she's and then she figures out a way it's to... Her. Yeah. It's her. For that's it to be very good powerful. It's wow. just, I mean, it's one of my favorite truths. I mean, how do you yes. pick a favorite truth of the gospel? Right. But this idea that our suffering is our salvation, mm. right? It is take up your cross and follow me. So Jesus took his suffering and turned it into the ultimate good news for the universe, right? Right. right. But he also took his suffering and said, I want to show you how to take your suffering and turn it to the, ul- the ultimate good news of your universe. Mm. Mm. So ladies, to answer, get back to your question. If this is you, you're in the trench, you have no time, mm. you have no money, you have no sleep, you don't have enough support logistically, and mm. you feel like you're under the you know, the constant demand under resourced. Right. I want to encourage you, you know, for me in that time, there were three things I knew I could do no matter what. One, the number one thing is work on my thoughts. Mm. When you're tired and you're stressed, Mm. it's so easy to go into what you don't have, what's not working, what's too impossible. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is your spiritual posture and your mental habits. Mm. And to say, God, please show me what to be grateful for. How can I create a future and a hope? What tiny goals can I make that I can feel a sense of progress with, which I found to be essential. And Mm. I might come back to that in a minute. But the other thing is, um, in addition to working on our thoughts is our posture. Mm. When I had Mm. no time to work out, I'm like, look, I can engage my abs up and in. Mm. I can draw my shoulders back and down. I can bring that chin back and the neck long. Mm. I'm working on my alignment and I can actually build my my spinal strength passively in this position, or I can hold an unconscious position at the end of the day, my neck's totally seized up and my lower back hurts. So you're, you can work on your posture. And the third thing is your breath. Mm. Um, We all have to breathe and we normally breathe unconsciously, Mm. but if you bring consciousness to that activity and you're breathing more slowly and more deeply, it puts you in the parasympathetic nervous system. What is that? that? Well, oh, I need. love that. We all need <laughs> yes. that. So the parasympathetic nervous system is the rest, digest, and heal part of our nervous system. Oh, okay. And it allows, it tells your body there's no threat here. Mm. We can heal, we can repair, we can be present, and nothing urgent is needed. Mm. The sympathetic nervous system is like, we need to get stuff done. Maybe there's a threat or maybe there's just a long, maybe there's just a big agenda and you're like, look, this is happening. So what's our, what's our spiritual posture? Mm -hmm. What thoughts are running our program? It's really what's the filter we're, we're viewing our day through, Mm. which is everything. The story that you're telling, yes, you know, and then the posture and then the breath. So those are something we can do when we have zero resources. I loved making literally three, one to five minute goals that I would like have tally marks. I would check them off every day. Mm. You know, because it just really? felt like I can move something forward. Mm-hmm. I can make this happen. I did it every month. While you're homeschooling? For sure. Yeah. For sure. And you kind of have to because, yes. you know, you're going to get triggered and that parasympathetic, sympathetic dichotomy, mm-hmm. those two opposites, right? One rest and digest, the other fight and flight. You know, it's interesting because the breathing is what tends to take you, you know, into the rest and digest, the focus. You can, you're more aware of, of, of yeah. on all levels. Yeah, that's true. And in the Bible, isn't it awesome that the word for the Holy Spirit, the word for spirit is pneuma, which is like pneumonia. Mm. Holy, uh, breath. Wow. Holy, holy breath. Wow. Holy breath. Holy breath. When the holy breath comes upon us, yes. we will receive power as yeah. from on high. Wow. Right? The real power is presence. And when we're triggered, and we're playing those old, you know, habit patterns that fixed mindset. Wow. We're not in the present anymore. Hmm. We've we've lost the the presence. Wow. You know That's what Tori's awesome. dad always says? I'd rather have bad breath than no breath at all. <laughs> That's a good point. That's great. I love that it. Is, a good point. is that very well timed? Yeah, I love it. it is very well okay, timed. Great. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Where were we? Um, um yeah, so it's it's just amazing when you make those small goals and you have that sense of progress. It's essential, especially as a mom, because often your day is being handed to you and you don't even get the agenda ahead of time, right? Mm -hmm. Like you don't know that like someone's going to make a big mess. It's going to take 40 minutes to clean. Then you're going to be late and you're going to have to deal with the implications of that and on and on and on. Right. And it feels like someone else is running your day Mm. and they're mean, (laughs) right? right, So having a really good structure Mm. and then also practicing flexibility. It's like literally the balance of strength and flexibility that you want in your body for, for fitness, right? Wow. You don't want to be too strong and not flexible at all. You don't want to be 
super flexible, but have no strength. So you need the structure and you're like, God, give me a great plan for my day. And, and you're balancing what's coming at you with your leadership, Mm -hmm. right? You are leading it. And you're, but you're also noticing the patterns like, well, the kids kind of do this around 11 and everyone starts getting a little fight. Maybe Mm -hmm. if I made lunch a little earlier, like you just start noticing, you know, so you're taking prompts from what's not working and be like, Hmm, how could I tweak that? So you're, you're, you have the plan, you have the responsiveness, and then you have tiny goals and those tiny goals. You know, I can remember times where it was 15 minutes in a day and it might be, I'm going to have a five minute quiet time. Oh, that's good. Yes. I'm going to yeah. have five minutes of stretching yep. and I will take a quick shower. Mm. You know, it might be something really <laughs> small, yes. yeah. you know, yeah. but you're like, I did all that, you know, and I, you know, the Lord will show you, it will rotate the, you know, sequence in which you do things or where it fits in the day. And I want to say to all the moms, mm. take the time. Yeah. You don't realize that if you take 15, 30 minutes, an hour, maybe it's 10 minutes every two hours, right? That is going to help you not need to take se- you know, multiple time of that, you know, correcting yeah. for what you missed or like you were sharp and then mm. accidentally you, you know, you were too harsh with the child and then now you feel bad about it all day. And then mm. now it's like a domino effect where now they're right. harsh to each other. So like the things you think might be selfish, mm. It's strategic. It's, let's say that yeah, it's not selfish. It's strategic. It. Yes. And you're like, I'm going to lead by example. Mm. And none of us are robots. We mm. all have needs. Yes. And I want to teach you how to meet your needs in context of everyone else. It's not like one person's needs is going to dominate everything. Right. right. And I would even say that to the kids. Oh, this is a good tip. I just remembered this. I would say, guys, we have a full day today, but I really want to know what would make today a great day for you. Mm. Can you tell me two or three things that you would hope for today? And I'm going to do as many of them as I can in my heart. I want to do everyone's everything. But if there's six kids, I can remember one would say, I want to go to the park. And another would say, I want to watch a movie. Another would say, please make blueberry muffins. Mm -hmm. So I would take- Ours would say, can we go back to bed and not- (laughs) I would take those and I would say, I would make sure I would work into my day one yes for each of those. Oh, that's cool. You know? So it was kind of like, you don't, it's not like all around. I think kids might think adults are just like- doing what they do. And I'm like, I want to say like, I understand, you may not understand that I'm not actually choosing all these things, even Mm. though I am choosing all these things. You know, this isn't like my wish list necessarily, Right, right? but we all have things we hope for and what you hope for matters to me. Mm. Oh, and I want to show you how to hear each other Mm. and you know, it's like you can do everything, but let's, let's make an effort. So, and then should I go to the second point about how to support your partner when you see them? Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I speak from experience in doing this lots of ways incorrectly and finally finding something that works really well. And I'm so grateful for that. Thank you for your patience. Yeah. Good job, Eric. I love you, sweetie. You're not a joke. <laughs> so I don't know if it's the way I'm wired or it's more of a female thing. I suspect it's a little bit of both, but most women tend to be a little bit more aware of what's going on emotionally, the temperature with themselves and in social situations. Yeah. And it can be you a little, like when you say, Eric, why are you so upset? And I'm like, I'm not upset. I don't know. You're right. And yeah. That's I happened. think about it for about 10 minutes. I'm like, I oh. think I am upset. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know that? Yeah. We, <laughs> she's like, duh. We say in our book um, that, that women typically are really good sensors and men are really good solvers. Obviously, a man can sense things and a woman sure. can solve things, but yeah. your superpower is sensing things yeah. and we need that sensor. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm imagining it's different with every couple, but something that's worked for us or is currently working for us, mm. you know, in 10 years, maybe we'll have some new tools to, to bring out, but is when I notice, and it usually has to go back and forth twice before I catch on. Like that first response, I don't necessarily realize immediately what's going on. And then there'll be a second, like, Thing and I'll be like, oh, right. Oh, it's like, oh, Got this it. is the game. Yeah. Right? But you're paying attention. Mm. I'm paying attention. It's mm. good. And then I realize there's something going on here, and it's not about this moment. It's not about. It may not be about me. It could be about me. Right. It could be that I've triggered something, and he's yeah. just like, that's a bruise, and you're pushing on it, mm. and that's why you're getting a bigger reaction because we're not just touching now. We're touching the category, right. which is that tenderness, yeah. that tenderness in yeah. the relationship. But it could also have nothing to do with me, mm. and it could be something I couldn't even imagine. Right. Or I could have yeah. guessed the context pretty effectively. I'm a pretty good guesser, but I don't always get it right. I'm yeah. like, Ooh, this happened. Then that happened. You told me this. Oh, I think this is what's going on. <laughs> 
mistake number one, women do not do this. I could tell you it's not a good idea. <laughs> do not try to describe it for the person and say, I think this is, this is what's what happening. <laughs> uh-huh. It's not received well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. The best, most supportive thing I have found is to notice it mm-hmm. and to just disconnect and give him space. Okay. Like he needs space mm. to come to his own conclusion, get his own clarity. And so I'll just kind of lovingly like create, I, we don't have to solve this right now. Right. We don't have to finish this conversation. There's nothing like urgent. That's like demanding that we stay in this because we're just going to get tangled and it's going to create something else. Why would we do that? Right. <laughs> yeah. So just to have the awareness to go, okay. Mm. And then just, pivot and be like, just go do something else. And then it usually just takes whatever it takes. It's not necessarily a long time. And then the next time just to have that warmth, because sometimes you want to come back and you're like, that's a porcupine. I want to stay away. Right. 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 But to try and at least get to neutral (laughs) and hopefully Mm -hmm. neutral with compassion Mm -hmm. and realize, you know, there is a story here. There's something going on. And father, just please give me a heart of compassion. It's been me plenty of times. Mm. Don't let me bring judgment and irritation. Let me bring compassion and just to be present as his partner for whatever God would reveal to him. And when he's ready, we'll talk about it. Wow. I love that. That's beautiful. Talk to us a little bit about fight club rules. (laughs) What is fight club rules? Oh, yeah. Do you want to see that? Sure. You guys want to, can y'all just duke it out right before us real quick? Just do it right here on air. I'll lose on air. That's what happened. (laughs) Fight club rules. That's cool. So, I mean, I think, um, I think all of us, and, and for those of you guys listening, you know, one of the things that is a, um, a point where the enemy attacks us is that, um, there's so many things we don't talk about that our parents didn't talk about with mm-hmm. us about marriage or about yeah, relationships. That's there's, so true. There's so many things in school we're learning that are frankly kind of irrelevant, right. you know, and so many things we're not learning that we should learn, like dealing with conflict and, and mm. understanding other people yeah. and understanding ourselves. So I think that one of those things is how to fight. Well, mm-hmm. um, I think there's a problem that would say when you're really hurt, you know, shut down and go, right. go run away. Mm-hmm. And then you're kind of abandoning yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. But then there's another side of that. That's like, Hey, I'm not going to let you get away with that. And you're super aggressive and now you're the bully, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, well, that's not good either. Yeah. And so it's not a one or the other. It is how can I be assertive Mm -hmm. without being aggressive or without being passive or without being aggressive and passive or any of the combinations assertive means I'm not going to give up what I think I see, but I don't need to, there's no punishment in the conversations, Mm -hmm. there's no need to enact justice or to be right. Um, so I think that, um, you know, developing some agreements with your partner is vital. Mm. Um, like upfront agreements, agreements, but not like we have four steps. We do, but like, Uh how are we going to, when we get into it and it's on, it's like, this is how we're agreeing to fight. And the number one, number one, number one that I did not get, but by God's grace, I was like, okay, I'll do that. And I haven't done it perfectly. Um, is the timeout. Mm. Uh, take a timeout before you start engaging. No, like it's on and we're okay. talking and it's elevating. And at any time, either of can say timeout. Okay. And once the person says timeout, you cannot speak. So that's number Neither, one of your four. Number one rule. Well, I don't know if it's, one, it's not one the, sequence, the sequence, but you, yeah, go ahead. But it's like, to me, it's like the number one principle. Is mm. Oh, that's great. We both know that at any time we can just hit pause. And that's wow. okay. And mm-hmm. that is not okay with me, but I am working. God help me for it to be okay with me. <laughs> oh, so you're the one I'm that needs fixer. it worked. Yeah. I'm all guys fixer. are like that. I want to stay in. I don't mind the conflict. I, my childhood was not so great. Mm. So, um, so probably what is loud to me would be deafening to normal people. Cause I'm like, I'm okay with the intensity gotcha. yeah. and that's not a great mm-hmm. thing, you yeah. know? So, so staying in that, that, uh, moment and, and continuing to try to fix it is like hugging someone with a sunburn. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it took me, a, I'm like, mm-hmm. I love you. Good Rachel. Analogy. I, yeah. I want to, I, yeah. that my heart, although my voice probably didn't sound like that, but my heart is like, I love you. I don't want to disconnect. Let's fix this mm-hmm. thing. And she's going, ah, right. This hurts so bad. Mm-hmm. So just being able to call a timeout and then to honor that. And the person who calls the timeout can say, Hey, I need a timeout. Don't do it this way. Uh, Jason, you and me are really in it. And I can tell you're really not mature right now. So I'm going to take a timeout. So you don't, you can't jab on the timeout. What'd you call that? Okay. Therapizing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't, you don't jab the person. It's, it's I'm I need a timeout. A timeout. Not you me. need a timeout. Exactly. <laughs> okay. And Got so it. no reasons. Hey man, just for where I'm at right now, I want to take a timeout and let's come back. This is your responsibility. Mm. 
in 10 minutes. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that time out. Or 20 or 30 or, or an hour. Okay. But tomorrow. you set a time frame. It's not like so you're open-ended. You can sleep on it. Yeah. You can. Well, and you know, I know the Bible says, don't let the sun go down in your anger. Yeah. Different ways to look at that. A lot of things you can get in that. Right. But right. I feel like if I am triggered and I am not self-conscious anymore, yeah. probably nothing good's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. So I got to come back to my center. Yeah. Tori yeah. knows that if she gives me time in the morning, it, chances are God's going to set me straight. Yeah. See? So yeah. true. Yeah. Okay. So give us your yeah. four, so four points. So the, the four steps about like when we're actually engaging and we're both, you know, in our right minds, right? <laughs> engaging. <laughs> so we found this trial and error over time. It has been such a gift for us. And we usually use it. Sometimes we forget and we regret it. Right. right. <laughs> but the person who has the concern is able to speak. Okay. But normally we try to, cause we're both very verbal. We were like, try to say like, try and say it in like three to five minutes. Like if it's more than that, the person can't really take it in yes. and don't like okay, put everything good. in at once. Like and pick no, an issue. Not a lot of examples because we always want to give examples, you know, it's tie like, it to everything. Say what it is. Yeah. yeah. So the first thing is one person speaks, they're not interrupted. Got and the it. other person is listening. They're attempting a neutral face. Who speaks first? Who speaks <laughs> Who, whoever's first? Upset. Oh, okay, whoever's upset. Whoever's most the upset, who whoever has, has the, the issue. The grievance. Okay. 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 So that person brings their grievance and they're able to speak, but it's not like a 30 minute rant. Right. You're bringing everything that ever happened. It's like pick an issue. Yeah. yeah. And we even have this funny, we call it statute of limitations. Statute, <laughs> statute, sorry, of limitations where it's like you can't bring in stuff past a certain period of time. And we've decided yeah. it's two months. Two months. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, Keep a short if you need okay. to talk about the big stuff, you probably need backup. You need somebody You need a third, a third party that's there to help. Because obviously, if you're st- still talking about it and it's from a long time ago, it's it's a big one. It hurts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you need help. Right. Yeah. Wow. But is there anything we need to talk about? In front of the <laughs> <laughs> Can you think of anything? We yeah. need to think about that before <laughs> they leave town. <laughs> be our third party. Yeah, that's funny. Um, so those are the rules for the speaker. And then the other person needs to repeat, not their interpretation, the correct this version, is so important. Yeah, this is so important. <laughs> but they have to repeat. This is what I hear you saying. Almost, this happened, can, this happened. If you can do it almost word for word. Yeah. So the reason the first person needs to be short is because the second person is responsible to say almost all of it back mm-hmm. and not add your own spin. Interpretation. Oh, okay. uh, because got it. the goal yeah. is to make them feel heard. Yeah. Not to agree with them. This is so hard. <laughs> so what you're saying is <laughs> you I'm a jerk me. and a loser <laughs> and that I do nothing well. I mean, you know. Got it. Okay, but got you, it. <laughs> but the point is not to agree. It is to yeah. make sure that she or me is feeling heard. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now that's a good this Good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay, so, so we can follow you. Step one mm-hmm. yeah. is to listen well to listen one well. person speaking okay. one issue in a Got reasonable in a short chunk. Amount of time. Short amount step of time. two, they repeat it. Back. Repeat it's it back. Repeated back. More. Got it. Yeah, and then step three is to empathize. Now, to oh, empathize is not to say you're correct and your your response was, you know, the only correct way to do this. Mm. It's to say if I felt. Like my best efforts were never good enough. Yeah. If I felt like you're not respecting my time by always being late and it's not a priority that we get this date time. If I felt da, 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 or, and it wouldn't necessarily be, and you could even link it to something that happened to you. That's not in the marriage. Like when I've been in situations where I didn't feel heard Mm. when I have, you know, been in situations where fill in the blank. It really hurt. And your goal is to connect in your heart Truly. with their feeling Truly. in a legitimate way and be like, I felt like that before. Yeah. Whether or not I feel yeah. like wow. that was legit in this situation is yeah. not it's, it's not what we're discussing. It isn't. it isn't because we're connecting our hearts, not our minds. That's right. And when I feel you feel your experience of being let down by someone, yeah. I'm like, wow, he he's getting it. Mm. And that's not even him agreeing with me that I let him down or yeah. whatever. You know, it's that's right. this right. Kind of, it's like so we're good. connecting at that heart level. Yes. yes. Do you yes. know how many women right now just clicked pause and are going to get their husbands and telling them to listen to this? <laughs> yeah, it's so powerful. I need it. It's it really so is. powerful. Wow. And that fourth one is beautiful because it's make a request. Mm. So I, have you oh, heard good. this? Have you heard this yeah. quote? A complaint is just a really lousy way to make a request. Yeah. Wow. I love that. Yeah. And every time I want to make a complaint, I, I, hopefully the Holy Spirit prompts me most of the time to instead make yeah. a request. And it's really important in marriage. And it's mm. really important after you've expressed something that was disappointing, whether it was your particular lens and how you took it, or it was a legit, you know, yes. mm. grievance. That's right. It's either way you can make requests. So it would be like, next time, I'm just going to ask you, could you please, you know, text me ahead of time and tell me dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Um, it would mean a lot to me if um, 
you could apologize to dot dot for you know how how yeah. they would make it right yes. and how they would do it differently. It's important to give yourself permission to ask for what you want. I feel like for me as a man, that was pretty hard. To say, I want you to do this. Mm. You know yes. what I mean? And the that thing is that, hard. And it's also nice that the thing is that then you can negotiate. So mm. Rachel can That's say, right. um, here's the grievance. I reflected it back. I empathized. She makes her request. Yep. And then I can't do the request. And yeah. I can say, I'm not sure I can do that. I could do this. Okay. And now cool. there's some time for us yes. to work through that. And there may be a pause there. Let's go yeah. back and think about that. But the net result is she feels heard. Yeah. We are connected mm-hmm. and I have something to do. Yeah. It's like yeah. really clear as Move opposed to just kind of the vomiting of the emotions yes. and yeah. then, oh, okay, I got to go pick up the kids. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yes. Oh, that's so good. I love that. It's very practical and, and simple. Yes. Yeah. I'll say the that. steps one more time. Yes. So step one, step one is say your grievance, okay. keep it to one. Okay. <laughs> step two is to have the person repeat, repeat that back. back to you mm-hmm. clearly. So you know that you were heard. Number three is for them to empathize yep. to how connect, that would make them connect feel the feelings. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then number four is to make a request. And then there may be some negotiation in that request. Here's what I, I love like about that. this. Um, because, and I, we tell people this all the time on our podcast is that the, the wife is the coach of the husband. <laughs> the wife is the is the emotional relational coach of the husband. So, husbands, if you're listening to this, let so your good. wife coach you through this landmine so of emotions. That's it. That like so if you true. just let her, yeah. right? Yeah. So Tor will take that thing and legit, it'll you know sink in. But now what I have to do is that when my manly anger sparks mm-hmm. up or so that that might be born out of some insecurity, I have to let her coach me through that. That's right. It was a great decision I made when I let Tori start coaching me emotionally. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. And just kind of give in to that. But this this is awesome. It's hey, so good. Did you want to say something to no, close real quick? No, this was so good. Uh, I loved every minute of it. Thank I, you guys so much. Oh, my so gosh. Our pleasure. So can we have you all on, on again? Of course. Yes. Really? Of course. Oh, this yeah. is so cool. Okay, so uh, Eric's website, ericbeck.com. Eric Beck speaks. Eric Beck speaks.com. He's got three TEDx talks on there. I listened to all of them before we, before I decided I'm partnering with this dude, uh, but to do business with Eric uh, and myself, you can go to expert ownership.com, but you need to listen to his TEDx talk on Eric Beck speaks. Rachel Beck wellness.com. Yes. Are you taking clients now? I am. And you I are? have online courses and clients and I love it. I love helping women. Awesome. Okay. Well, that's so awesome. Good at it. <laughs> I, I do not doubt. We got a lot of people that listen to this podcast. I do not doubt you're going to have people, you know, reaching out to you. Can they can they contact you through your website? Yes. Right, absolutely. right there. Okay. Contact us. This was really fun. This I mean, I so learned fun. a lot. This is great. But we need to do an, an I want to do another one right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do a would you rather? Would you rather? And Tori, do you, do you have one? Do do you have one? I forgot my oh, book. Oh, she forgot her book. Okay. I love this. Okay, so we always end our podcast with would you rather? Okay. And sh- maybe I should ask them one that we've done in the past. I'm going to go ahead and ask and see which one you guys would rather. Okay. Eric, Rachel, would you rather have fish eyes or hot dog fingers? That's Fing- tough. Oh, goodness. I'm going to go with fish eyes. Could I could wear really cool glasses oh, yeah. for most of the time? <laughs> And only the people that I'm actually close to and love me unconditionally would ever see my disfigurement. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go with hot dog like fingers because of that's the, a thought through the grip answers. strength you could get on the Spartan races. Oh, with, they, oh yes. Yeah. Strong hands. That is such a guy answer. <laughs> I said hot dog fingers because you can wear gloves. Oh, yeah. that's a good point. What did you say I didn't to think her? of that. I, I did hot dog fingers too just because like there's so much connection through the eyes. Oh. I don't know if I could... That's a good point. I don't That's know. That's a good point. They, they would both be a pretty big bummer. <laughs> Here's the beauty of that. Have to rethink that answer. That when you, you watch people processing a foolish question, yeah. like that, <laughs> and Rachel's like, oh, that's such a good answer. Oh, so yes, I totally, yeah. now I get that. I think I get that. <laughs> so awesome. Hey, this was great. Thank you guys for being here with us. And mm. this will not be the last time. Mm, awesome. So we're going to do some virtual uh, podcasts, more oh, podcasts sure. with you guys if, if you don't already start your own. You need a podcast, you do. Rachel. Yeah, we'll see. Let's get that going. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Throw you and Tori on and just get y'all going back and forth. But this was fantastic. So thank you listeners for hanging yes. out with us. This is a little longer than normal, but we wanted to give them ample time. And I know that they did not disappoint. So don't forget to rate, review, subscribe. And until next time, do I end with some like cutesy little saying? No, 
I don't, do I? You're just cutesy. Just all cutesy. Around. Oh, that's just nice yourself. Of you. <laughs> okay. awesome self. All right. We'll see you guys next Thanks time. Thanks for listening. See you guys soon. Bye.